four-time Miss Olympia Jay Cutler. Welcome to my channel, Jay Cutler TV. And make sure to stay in tune with the newest and updated videos. Subscribe below, guys. Thank you so much for following along. All right, guys, Dave Mad Max 6, and we are at Fit Nation in Norwalk for a very special Muscle Beach TV on Jay Cutler TV. And I have my... For the very first time, my good friend, Milos Sanchez. Milos, welcome to Muscle Beach TV. It's great to be here, and uh, we go a long way. And also, it's Jay Cutler's TV. Jay is uh, one of the guys that really I admire, respect, and love. So uh, I'm glad I'm doing it. I have waited a long time to do this Muscle Beach TV interview with, with you, Milos. You were out of, uh, out of the country for a long time. But I, I mean, like I said, like you said, we go way back. I think I've known you since uh, the early 1990s or late 1990s when I was working with Max Muscle. You were, of course, a Max Muscle athlete at the time. Yes, I remember your first workout with me when we did his legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Don't was, remind me. Yeah, that was, that was something I'll always remember. We had the pictures of it. He actually had a white towel and said, okay, it's a white flag. He couldn't do it anymore. Yes, but yeah, uh, I've been with uh, Max Muscle. Max Muscle is actually one of the first uh, uh, companies I was representing. It used to be Mega Pro, Joe Wells, yeah. is a good friend of mine, and then, uh, yeah, they converted into the Max Muscle, so I was there a long way. You know, Sean Green as well, you know, he was a kid yeah. coming from Florida. I remember being in my house, taking him to the workouts. So, you know, it's great memories. But, uh, yeah, uh, as you are one of the guys that was uh, my gym member, you know, Colosseum right. Gym, we, we, we touched the subject. Yeah, it's uh, always good to, to have you. We just seen Dave Hughes yeah. also training in, in my Colosseum Gym and many, many others. I mean, when you talk about my training partner, Matt yeah. uh, Maldonado, you know, he joined the gym on his 19th birthday. His uh, father brought him and that was his birthday gift. Wow. So I want to go back memory lane a little bit because we have a lot we have a lot of ground to cover. Um, you know, you you um, you've always been. I mean, people call you a legend still to this day. Uh, we just came back from the uh, USA Bodybuilding Championship where you know you and Jay did a little pose down, which the fan loved. Um, but I want to go back a little bit and, and talk about a little bit what's been happening for you the past few years. Like I said, you were a very big presence in California. You've been here since. When did you move to California? What year? Uh, I came in 1987, you okay. know, to represent my country in Miss Universe contest. Of course, there was uh, uh, AU, WBF, it wasn't uh, IBB because back in my country, IBB wasn't strong and I actually didn't have idea, you know, uh, the difference between federations. Then when I came here and I realized I started competing, I, very few people know, in NPC shows, the like Curly 88, and I did the uh, Cal, which uh, Flex Wheeler won. Uh, I did the oh, wow. Las Vegas uh, show that you were going to compete. Yeah. I did a Coastal USA uh, in Atlanta, actually. I went there. I was also competing every weekend. You know, I was just try trying to make experiences. Uh, I won that uh, Coastal USA overall as NPC. And then uh, I went to the Nationals. Well, very few people know that, like 89. Wow. I was there uh, in uh, North Carolina, I believe, Raleigh, yes. And uh, uh, backstage, they asked me for my citizenship. I said, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we need that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do we need this to, to compete? You know, so I never competed there, but, you know, I was there backstage and uh, there was some video footage that didn't allow me to compete, of course, oh. but, uh, you know, uh, what would I expect, you know? I, j I just uh, figure, because after I won the um, Vegas show, they said, okay, we are paying for your flight and everything wow. for the Nationals, so I went there, wow. but they didn't ask me if I was a citizen or resident, so, you know, assume. yeah, yeah, that's, that's the case. So of course you get your pro card and you, you start competing, you know, in the IFBB and you very, very well. You place top placing at the Olympia, won, you know, a few shows, and then, of course, opened this, you know, built this this great mecca of Orange County called the Coliseum Gym, and around that time it started to become a little bit blurry between your competitive uh, career as a top Olympia contender, and then you started helping a lot of great champions, Gustavo Badel, Dennis James, Luke, with all these guys, Silvio Samuel, Hiritara. Now your gym becomes this, this very famous place where not only you train all these champions, but all the weeder shoots are being there, Chris Lund before the Olympia. Yeah. That gym becomes very, very famous, and then we don't see you compete no more. So, so tell me a little bit what's going on between this gym, training all these champions, and your your you know personal career as a bodybuilder but there it is actually i turned pro 1991 and uh, i'm going to digress a little bit you know just to tell you a little bit about the beginning of my career because yeah. i started training guys like uh, 99 so yeah. end of the end of the uh, 90s in the beginning of the 90s i competed pretty much in every show that was organized i did uh, every show 91 uh, you know 92 i miss uh, uh, 
couple. You know, I wasn't in Bayer for Arnold Classic. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't like, I did the Arnold Classic 92 as well. Uh, 93, I skipped, uh, you know, a few shows. But in general, I did the uh, 72 IBB Pro shows. Wow. I, I was competing. There's uh, three years that I competed in every show that was organized. I figure I'm an IBB professional. That's my job. There's opportunity. How can I say no? Right. You know, I was uh, being in shape year round, so it was uh, okay. It's just like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to work. Thursday, I don't feel like it, so I'm not going. For me, every show that is uh, organized was opportunity. It's IBB Pro Show, yeah. and it was only like eight to ten shows during a year, so I, I didn't want to miss it. Uh, but I tell you a funny story because uh, you know some of the guys maybe uh, they're going to compete for the first time. You know, think about uh, that experience of a pro debut. I was going to San Jose uh, Pro Show really just to possibly stand next to some, you know, a top champion and take a picture. You know, I didn't expect any placing or anything like that. So, especially I was, uh, my father had a stroke. I went uh, to Serbia. Uh, I stayed with him and 17 days before the show, I actually returned. I didn't really plan it. But it was San Jose, it was so close. I was eligible to compete. Okay, let me compete. But uh, to make long story short, I'm there on the stage, and back in those times, remember there was a symmetry round, mm -hmm. and then muscularity round separately. So uh, I was standing right next to next to Albert Beckless and Tim Belknap, and I told my uh, friend, I go, come on, take a picture, take a picture, <laughs> and I'm posing all this stuff, and show started, right? And I was in the first call out, but I didn't hear my name because <laughs> nobody can s nobody can spell my name correctly, <laughs> and uh, I'm posing, 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 and then you feel something is weird. And then I look, and there was Randy Miller, like, competitor number five. Like, oh, shit, that was me. So anyway, I, I won that symmetry round, and I qualified for Olympia. My first shot was top three. Wow. Uh, there was Ron Love and Sonny Schmidt uh, ahead of me. So th that was my experience uh, from competing. But uh, you understand, 90 is the toughest era of uh, bodybuilding. So I competed, unfortunately, with the uh, you know, top of the crop. It was uh, uh, Dorian and, and Nasser and Ronnie and Flex and Sean and Kevin and Lee and... Paul Dillette, uh, Chris Cormier, I mean, you know, so it, it was just like very hard, but uh, I knew that, okay, if uh, uh, I'm just consistent and I showed up, you know, uh, I want to talk about this also uh, mentality of the winner. Uh, I didn't really see myself winning, and I was going to all these shows just to place. Honestly, I mean, when we talk about, well, should I, be, should I expect to beat uh, Flex Wheeler at his best or Ken Leveroni? No. You know, so I was, you know, being uh, like, okay, just to be good enough. But then uh, one show, one show only, uh, there was my 48 show, I remember, Canada Pro, uh, 97. Uh, Peter McGough interviewed me for a magazine. I actually say, I believe I can win. And it was Chris Cormier and Mike Mandrasi and some other guys. But I really, truly believed I'm going to win. And I won it. So that's why I want to, you know, talk about it a little bit, uh, you know, to the guys. If you don't believe, you know, that believe achieve, you know, it's like uh, stated so many times, but there is something about uh, winner's mentality, you know, uh, and, and when I go back now and I'm like, why didn't I think of winning more shows? I mean, uh, when I look back, you know, and I'm my worst, uh, hardest critic, I, I see like several shows I could have won. I won only one. A uh, week later, Night of the Champions, right? I was already thinking like, okay, judging is going to be probably... Um, favoring, you know, American guys, and I'm not going to be able to win it, and I didn't. But, uh, okay, throughout the 90s, I had actually idea that I, I want to do the 100 shows. I did the 72 pro shows. I qualified for Olympia 10 consecutive years in the 90s, uh, all the 1990s, and I was qualified for 2000 as well. But what happened in 2000, uh, I had, a, as many people know, a central accident, uh, I speak openly about it. Yes, I'm ashamed and embarrassed I did it. A lot of people criticize me, but uh, I went out to talk about it. Uh, you know, that's uh, one of those things you sell your soul to the devil, you know, because I wanted bigger arms. I was being told with the bigger arms they have a chance to uh, win the shows. And uh, everybody else was doing it, so I decided to do it. And it was obviously the biggest regret of my life because uh, it created a fibrotic tissue, necrotic tissue. And what happened uh, that one time, um, as uh, it was injected, even you know, basically through my heart, I had a congestive heart failure, and this odds acute respiratory disease syndrome. I was hospitalized, and actually, they told me I have less than 24 hours to live. You know, so uh, it was very serious. And when the the media and IBB found out this, they they said, like, uh, even though you qualify for 2000 Olympia, you cannot compete. So pretty much there, 
in 99, uh, I opened the Colosseum gym. I, at that time, it was actually Powerhouse gym, right. and then Gold gym, and then I converted to the Colosseum. Uh, and, and I was focusing more on business, and I really, 2001 and 2003, I had some shows, just you know, to fulfill my contract. But it, it wasn't me. I mean, I was far away from uh, being in it. Uh, like, at the professional level, competing against the best in the world, you're either 100% in, you know, there's no uh, like compromises and then uh, doing a little bit business, a little bit this. So I, I wasn't really happy with the neither 2001 and 2003. But then, as you said, uh, I started training guys. In 99, I started uh, preparing Dennis James. And then how did that come about? Did they come to you? Did you approach them? Well, you know, how does uh, everybody kind of heard that uh, I was helping back uh, in 95, Nasser somebody. They introduce insulin into the, the sport. Uh, whoever says otherwise, you know, uh, there is so much proof there. You know, I was the one that actually wrote this article for Muscle Media 2000, but I was under professional X because you cannot use your name. I was under real contract and it would be breach of contract. You know, so I introduced insulin and, uh, you know, Nasser transformation from 94 Olympia to 95 Nano Champions and a Houston, you know, that he won both was astonishing. So, you know, there was many, you know, people finding out and they were openly asking me and I started helping. And uh, this is how uh, everything started. And I remember meeting Dennis James at 99 um, Nano of the Champions that uh, uh, I competed. I was fifth, I think, and he was the like 15th. And we talked backstage and I told him, like, look, you know, your shape, your structure, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. You can go. So I decided to help him. And then you see uh, Dennis James coming in 2000 Nano Classic looking like a freak. And he became one of the, the biggest freaks there. So this is how it all went about. First, like uh, introducing people how to correctly use insulin. And that's the whole different subject. Uh, I remember Jay asking me in 99, <laughs> yeah, really, backstage at Arnold, you know, he asked me. I said, you know, Jay, you know, I explained to Chris back in the day we discussed it, you know, please talk to Chris because he's your coach. I, I cannot, uh, you know, respect and love Chris too much, you know, to say anything. But, uh, you know, if when he did it, you see what happened with Jay as well. But uh, uh, to make long story short, yeah, there is a, a list of people like Gustavo Badel. Dennis yeah, but uh, like Gustavo, 99, I wanted to help him, but because I was competing, he uh, didn't trust me. So <laughs> when I, the second when I retired, 2003, he came to me and uh, you know wanted to uh, to do it. And not a, no, it was uh, nationals in uh, in Miami, and it was again seminar with Jay and Dexter, me, Sean. That Gustavo actually showed up, and that was our official start, nationals 2003. And then you see what happened by. Uh, 2004, three months later at uh, Ironman, he was third be behind uh, Dexter and Lee Priest, and then went into the uh, GNC being second and top three at Olympia. Great. You know, so uh, those are kind of things. And, and you see, I am from former Yugoslavia, Serbia. You know, now I'm a U.S. citizen by all means. But uh, uh, as an underdog country, right? Uh, uh, I also like underdog athletes. So I would usually help uh, uh, guys that, uh, you know, were up and comers and, you know, not, uh, you know, top players, you know, to begin with and then just tweak around. So it was a uh, you know, pleasure helping all these guys. Hiritari Amagishi is uh, uh, another one. He was sent by a uh, you know, Japanese sponsor for me to hire him, to hire me. And uh, in a very short period of time, he, he made a tremendous... 2007 game. was a breakout year for guys like Silvio and yes. Hide who were, comp who were training at your gym yes. all the time. Yes, uh, uh, when we're talking, that's all touch the subject. You see, I start really training so many of those guys, and Armin Schultz and, uh, and, and uh, Joel Stubbs, and uh, there was many, many great guys, but then I was suspended. <laughs> you know, Let's talk about that. Yeah, and then after I was suspended, I was not allowed, basically, to, to prepare them. And oh, really? Uh, not that I was not allowed, but they were told not to be prepared by me. Oh. You know, and I understood, and they all t uh, talked to me about it. I said, okay, you know. But uh, let's talk about suspension. And, and this is maybe a perfect opportunity. Thank you, Dre, for letting this happen. Because it's, you know, sitting heavy on my chest for a long, long time. You know, basically, I was IBB professional at the time. Malaysian government hires me to prepare a Malaysian team for a world championship and for uh, uh, Asian Games. Asian Games are uh, every four years, just like the uh, Olympics. So my guys did phenomenal Miss transformation of these two guys. I remember that. Yeah, there was uh, Cezali Samad and uh, Tech Liao Leung. I mean, uh, they were 
hardest working guys, you know, Asians, tunnel vision, and I was killing them. You know, so they got in a, in a perfect condition. Uh, they won this uh, world championship. But then, um, Minister of Sport and Youth, I remember even her name, Dr. Azalina, calls me and says, Sir, uh, my athletes were told by uh, IBB president of Asia, Paul Chua, they cannot win a gold medal. So, of course, me being a purist and, you know, kind of naive in this life, right? So, no, 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 no. This is against the law. It's punishable by law. Like, you know, if, uh, no, no. It's Asian Games. It's a huge show. That it cannot happen. But anyway, uh, they come to me a month before the Asian Games. I prepared them and then flew with them to Doha, Qatar. And uh, um, they had a list of every uh, category, every medal, you know, month in advance. So Already... Already had, yes. And uh, did they show me? I didn't believe it. But, you know, starting with like a 60 kilo class and whatever, and there was, they asked me, okay, look at this guy from Singapore. Like, what do you think? I said, this guy cannot make top 10. If he lies, depend on, he's going to win. And he won. And, you know, here he goes. Dennis James at the time, we were close friends at that time, 2006, came with uh, Badr Badai. They flew from Kuwait, you know, to see me and, uh, you know, hang, out, uh, hang around a little bit and see the show. And Bader, I just met him. I said, Milos, right there is um, my friend, a sheik, uh, Abdullah, no, I don't know, I don't remember the name exactly. He paid 75000 for his guy to win. There's 75000 for first place, you know, 50 for second and 25 for third. Okay? So, no, 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 no. So, here comes my category, and it says, Dali Samad in the best shape of his life. Slice and dice, dry, symmetrical, everything. I mean, it was like comparing Arnold and uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, <laughs> Arnold at his best. <laughs> well, after prejudging, he is losing, right? And uh, at the finals, you know, repeated, he lost to the guy from Dubai. Guy has tremendous physical, he's way off, like uh, uh, six, seven, eight weeks off. You know, it was, it was very visible. You know, s but what happened was that the Malaysian uh, um, minister came to me and said, would you be kind and, you know, tell my people in Malaysia on the television interview what happened? So I did the interview and I said exactly what it is. It's travesty. I'm uh, really ashamed that this happened. And uh, uh, there was highway robbery. You know, he des deserves to win. And there was uh, uh, fixed scores. In the meantime, because it was a two-day event, Immediately, I tried to call uh, IBB president at the time, uh, which was uh, Rafael Santaha, and report to him what happened. Because I was like, oh, it's my duty as an IBB professional to you know, stand for integrity of my uh, federation. This is not going to happen, and they need to be informed. Not knowing that uh, Rafael Santaha was in on it, in on it you know, with uh, uh, Paul Chua. You know, so I remember he was on a helicopter ride with this uh, pa Pavel Filiborn, who was actually a friend of mine. He's an uh, uh, IBB judge from Poland. He was uh, like his right-hand man. And he told me, Milo, shut up. I said, I'm reporting the crime, and you're telling me to shut up, right? So what happened next is that uh, um, Paul Chua filed a complaint, and they asked me to apologize publicly. Rafael Santaoha, there was a couple of other judges that I confronted. A guy from Holland, I remember, you know, see him in the, st uh, in the uh, airport and said, like, okay, uh, aren't you ashamed? He says, what? You know, he said, I don't have any money. Look, look. Oh, you don't have any money with you. Transfer is not the option, right? Money for, you know, you didn't, you know, get paid. But anyway, uh, I like to confront people when something was really like this. Now, I was told, uh, you know, by Weider as well, Ben Weider, I need to publicly apologize. I couldn't. It, I was raised differently, you know, like uh, um, I could not do that. Even, even right now, I knew that I lost, you know, pretty much everything. I lost every contract. I had a publication contract, video contract, a supplement contract, a uh, gym contract, as you said, uh, for, the for the photo shoots, and uh, I lost everything. Uh, I went to the Weeder's office, and there was, uh, <laughs> I'll tell this story, Robin, you know, sorry, but uh, you have to mention it, because Robin is mad at me since that day. He brought, uh, you know, for me just to sign it. They wrote it. I'm in a church of apologize group. I told him uh, to wipe his ass with it. <laughs> Sorry. You know, but uh, yeah, uh, what's his name? Um, um, good friend of mine, Peter McGough, was in the office. And uh, after, you know, Robin stormed out, uh, 
he hugged me and said, you know, I respect you know, who you are, what you do, but I cannot save you. I said, it is what it is. You know, so I lost the contract immediately. You know, um, Christian was pulled out of the gym. I was informed immediately that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, that my contract is gone. Wow. Next thing you know now, uh, I was suspended from the IBB. And this is, uh, uh, if you remember, because uh, uh, we talked to the Jay the other day, 2006, training all these people, Hiratada, Silvio, uh, you know, uh, Dennis Fold, you know, all these guys, I got in shape myself. And actually competitive shape that way better than 2003, my retirement, and I wanted to come back. But again, I was working like with four or five people uh, in a uh, European Grand Prix Tour in Austria, but then in Romania, you know, there is, there is only uh, one guy, Hiratada was going. So I decided, like, oh, you know what? I'm going to pull what Arnold Schwarzenegger did back in uh, uh, Olympia 1980. He was there as a commentator. Yeah. And, and actually, the, the uh, promoter asked me to be MC at the Romania show. So I told him, OK, I will see. Because uh, I didn't charge him anything. I was going to be there. And uh, uh, so I got that idea that I want to compete. So I did some things that the night before. And I woke up, perfect condition, dry to the bone, you know, full. <laughs> and you know, she, I, I, Shaved my upper body, my legs, and that's when the phone rang. And I was a Jay Cutler, and I love Jay, and I, I never regret it, you know, Jay. You know, but uh, he goes, Can you do me a favor? I so, said, Anything. So, okay, he put the gentana on me. I said, Okay. So he comes, you know how slow he walks. <laughs> and he had a like, little sponge like this big, and I tried to put this on this monster, right? It took me two hours. So uh, by the time uh, and when he came in, I was in a in a shirt and in a posing chance. I know that he looked at me, but he never really asked. But then Hiratada came and uh, uh, his Japanese friend uh, Betty, and uh, they always have a camera. So there was that one shot of me and Jay. Yes, I mean uh, <laughs> this this was uh, you know just proof I was. But my my back was so hairy there was like. Uh, <laughs> You know, a monkey, a monkey back, so I, I couldn't compete. And I had nobody to like, do it fast. So I said, it doesn't matter. You know, 2007 uh, uh, is around the corner. I love Iron Man. I like Iron Man lights. I know exactly yeah. how to prepare for this when you create that fullness. I mean, it's like, you know, such an illusion. <laughs> and uh, right before the 2007, I was uh, uh, suspended. Oh. And uh, I was suspended for one year, you know, because I didn't apologize, right? Yeah. And then 2008, when I uh, filled my application, you know, to be reestablished, no, nope, you still have to apologize. Oh. And then the third year, the same thing. By then, I already lost my competitive drive. But then uh, there was actually Pavel Filiborn, the guy that I mentioned that called me and says, Milos, uh, everything you said is proven to be truth. Uh, what year was that? That was 2009. Wow. And for 2010, I was reinstated in IVB, but you know, he says like, yes, uh, Paul Trey is suspended because it's proven of the, all these fixings. And uh, you see at the time, um, for whatever reason, Rafael was protected, you know, because uh, he was still with the IVB. And there was, you know, like just officially being nice, but we never discuss it. I mean, if I look at man in the eyes, you see, you understand that you cost me my livelihood by the wrongdoings that you did. And I called it, and you actually all made me a bad guy. So that, that's exactly what, what it is. But uh, you know, as a talk, I, I don't want people to, to get it wrong. I love, respect, uh, uh, and admire uh, Jim Mannion. And everybody knows me, but now I'm not a kiss ass, I'm not saying this. But I really respect the man. And I know that at the time, uh, he did what he had to. He was, he was told, he didn't know. You know I supposedly uh, you know, breached my uh, code of conduct. You know, as IVB, I, I didn't know that code. That uh, what I don't supposed to report a crime. Yeah. You know, that's a smoking gun, and I saw it, and I I, I said who was a shooter. You know, so uh, you know, uh, I talked to Jim uh, later, and he he you know, pretty much apologized. He says you understand. I say understand. I, I don't blame you, not whatsoever.